Another very important item to check when you're rebuilding your head is your, your valve stem clearance to your valve guide. Um, they generally run fairly tight clearances, sometimes under a thousandth of an inch. Um, the reason being is that the valve has to be held centered within the seat. It can't wobble around a lot because that adds to valve wear. It, it much accelerates the valve wear. Um, so there's several ways to measure this. You, again, you need to have a service manual for your particular bike and the OE will tell you how they spec it, how they want it measured, what all the, the measurements should be. There's several ways to do it. Um, some manuals will specify the movement in the valve at a certain height and you'll measure that with a dial gauge and that'll they'll equate that to how much clearance it has. The way I prefer is I think a little more accurate, a little more straightforward. It does require that you purchase some 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 of these uh, um, gauge rods in different sizes. This these particular ones are 4.99 millimeters 5.0 millimeters and 5.01 millimeters. Um, this valve stem is around 4.9 millimeters in diameter. So on this Honda head, um, they're looking for about 0.05 to 0.1 millimeters clearance. Um, the this is a 4.99 millimeter rod and we see that it, it fits in there okay. This is a 5.0. It fits in there okay. This is a 5.01. And it does not fit. So we know that the, the valve guide is about 5 millimeters on the ID. And then you just check with your service manual to see what the OE specs that it should be and what the service limits are. Okay, the next thing we're doing is installing the valve guide seal. Really not too difficult. Um, the way I do it is just I put a valve in place, slide the seal down over the valve stem from the top, and then I use a small socket. Um, seems like an eight millimeter deep socket seems to be about the right size and I just push it down and it's on and that's all there is to putting in the valve guide seal. Now we're going to install the valve spring and the spring retainer and the keepers for it. I'm first going to put the valve in the head and I usually pre install the keepers into the retainer so I put these in first and have them in place in the retainer. Um, everybody has a different way of doing it. Put the spring on. I'm going to set the uh, retainer in place. Already has the keepers installed. and nothing to it. Always make sure that you double check that your keepers are in there correctly and usually you want to do a little tap or something with just very lightly with your you know a little punch or something just to make sure that everything's seated incorrectly and you're good to go. Okay, another commonly overlooked item is your cam chain. Um, they don't last forever, 
Some models are fairly short-lived, some models last a while, but if you have the head off the bike or you're doing a piston or something, chances are your cam chain's probably worn out too. Um, it's also a good idea to check it just if you have the cams out when you're doing a valve adjustment or anything. You should always check it. The thing you want to look for, um, of course you can measure for stretch and things which will be in your service manual from your OE. Um, there is one quick way to check though. This is a good cam chain. You can see that it, it kind of, it's real free and maneuverable. It actually bends backwards. This center run is actually bending backwards and it, it's nice and free. There's no kinks in it. Um, and you can kind of do that when you have the cam out of the bike with the chain still in the engine too. Um, if you find that your chain looks like this, it's no good. So don't try to run it, just replace it. Um, cam chains do rarely break, but why wear out the sprocket on your crankshaft and ruin your cam sprockets and everything? Just most of them are fairly inexpensive. Um, just replace it. While you're looking at your cam chain, you should also look at your cam chain guides too. They're generally quite durable. Um, this one is well used, but it's still in good shape. I wouldn't replace it. Um, they will wear out though if the cam chain gets worn enough or if something happens to where the cam chain runs too loose, which would be from wear or a faulty cam chain tensioner. So. Don't forget to look at your cam chain tensioner if you're finding excessive chain guide wear. The other thing that damages these, if the engine runs excessively hot, overheats, whether you've lost coolant or run it low on oil or some, something has gone wrong to overheat the engine, that's the most common time these things get damaged. They will melt and warp. So you always want to look at it. Anytime you're doing a valve adjustment, you have the cams out, just glance down the cavity and with a flashlight and see if you can check out the condition of these cam chain guides too. Okay, last but not least, we've got the head assembled. We're going to put it on the engine. Um, make sure you have the cam chain guides in place. Uh, this one, usually on most bikes, will fit in right before the head gasket goes on. Make sure it fits down in the places where it belongs. Um, make sure this movable guide for the cam chain tensioner is out of the way. There's usually locating dowels for the head to line it up with the cylinder. I want to make sure those are in place. And then the head gasket. The head gasket, of course, you should replace it every time you have the head off. Um, sealer usually isn't required, um, especially silicone seals or anything like that, usually not recommended. It just squeezes out and gets in the oil passageways and the water ports and everything. Um, so if you're installing a new head gasket, there's really no need for sealer. Make sure you get it on in the right direction, front to back. Some of them are marked with an up. This one's not, but it only goes on in one direction if you line up everything correctly. And seat the head on. there's washers under the nuts. Some bikes actually have bolts also, long bolts that hold the cylinder and the head down at the same time. So you put your washers on. And then you've got your nuts.
And then the next step is critical. You'll need a torque wrench. And again, you're going to consult in your trusty service manual, and it'll tell you what the torque value should be for the bolts. And if there's a preferred tightening order, it'll also show that. You want to make sure you follow that. Um, sometimes there's instructions on taking them down to a certain torque, you know, one step at a time, you know, maybe halfway or a third of the way, and then, uh, you know, working up to the final torque. Um, I think it's always a good idea to uh, probably go to half torque first and then go back around and go to full torque on everything. And even after that full torque, you need to go around it another time and make sure that the torque stays the same. There's none of them that have lost a little bit of torque. Um, and I keep going around the bolts until they all have held their torque, which is usually only takes once or twice. 